Vancouver is putting more watchful eyes around the city, trying to keep car theft numbers dropping as fast as they did last year. A politician on probation and a woman who got thrown out of a theater. They aren't even the most troubled candidates on the congressional debate stage tonight. Donald Trump could derail the deal to get Denver help with the migrant crisis if Republicans in Congress decide to follow his commands. And exploring some of the most famous art in Denver through the eyes of younger art aficionados. The main thing in this painting is just an, an old man. I think they nailed it. That's tonight on Next. Ask someone what Denver's known for, and you might get something like the Broncos, legal cannabis, Red Rocks, craft beer, and car theft. But car thefts actually dropped almost 20% in the city last year, more of a reduction here than almost any other large city in America. Our Evan Krugel explains how Denver's looking to keep that momentum going by watching us more closely, our cars more specifically. At the corner of 6th and Federal sits a small white camera, one of just two in the Mile High City, tracking your license plate as you drive through. But these cameras will soon be at dozens of Denver intersections as Mayor Mike Johnston looks to cut down on a problem he knows all too well. Some of us, not naming any names, might happen to have some experience with this situation. Uh Johnston rolling out a new auto theft prevention plan including plans to install license plate readers at roughly 70 different Denver locations. Once we have a car that's been reported as stolen, we know what that license plate is. We can then scan across those cameras uh, for identifying those license plates. Johnston says they chose these areas after identifying spots where gun violence, auto thefts and hit and runs occur. The cameras will specifically track cars involved in hit and runs and cars involved in a crime. Generally, the way it functions is it would trigger, you know, hey, wanted vehicle, stolen vehicle, cross this camera at this time. It, it provides a notification, and then officers in the area will receive that and be able to respond. The state's Auto Theft Prevention Authority believes an increase in license plate readers is partially to thank for the state's 21% decrease in auto theft last year. It's a basis for a lot of recoveries. It aids in recovery time, it speeds up recovery time, and helps our law enforcement professionals uh, recover vehicles quickly. Denver has seen a similar drop, about 19%, with nearly 15,000 cars stolen in 2022 and 12,000 in 2023. The state says both numbers are good, but not good enough. Even with that 21% reduction, our theft rate remains extremely high. So we need to continue to reduce that by large quantities to get on track to become a safe state. Now, in total, they plan on putting more than 100 cameras at 70 different intersections. It is not cheap. The grand total here, just under $390,000. Kyle. So they're going to be tracking plates all over town. Who gets to see where we're driving? Yeah. How long are they going to keep track of that? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, Chief Ron Thomas today saying those videos, the, that data essentially will be encrypted in a server that only police can see. It will be held for 30 days and then purged, essentially deleted forever. Okay. All right. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Hey, everybody. Say hi to Evan. Uh, he's been a reporter in town for a long time, but he's new here at Nine News. Welcome to the next. Yeah, thanks. Glad to be here. Colorado House Republicans. Really move fast today to replace former minority leader Mike Lynch, the guy who stepped down yesterday, a week after his drunk driving and weapons arrest surfaced. Republican Rose Puglisi is his replacement. She represents Colorado Springs. She moved there from the Western Slope, where she was also in elected office. She inherits the GOP super minority of just 19 Republicans. And she said today that growing that number is her focus. Lynch left leadership, but he remains a state rep, and he's currently running for Congress. Now, if you think that drunk driving and reaching for a handgun during an arrest will disqualify Mike Lynch in the Republican primary for Colorado's 4th Congressional District, don't forget this is the same primary with a candidate who wants Colorado's Supreme Court arrested and tried for treason, and another candidate who's facing active criminal charges, and yet another candidate who tried to give a speech against abortion and ended up telling the story of all the women he's gotten pregnant including the one he gave money to when she got an abortion. And this is also the same primary with Lauren Boebert. So who boy, would that be a debate? And Marshall Zellinger is there for us tonight. I guess this means that I won our game of rock, paper, scissors, Kyle. 
Uh, what you just described is the main event tonight. There are two debates happening in Fort Lupton right now in the same room where that CD4 debate is going to happen is a debate for Republicans in Congressional District 8. That is the district that is currently represented by Congresswoman Yadira Caraveo. After this is over, we will move to the CD4 debate. Congressional District 4 is the most Republican district in Colorado that spans the Eastern Plains in Douglas County, which means the winner of the Republican primary will be the next congressperson. Yes, I know there's a general election in November, but given the voter makeup of this district, whoever wins in June is going to be the winner. And nearly a dozen who want that job will be here tonight. Some of these faces and names you will know, some you're seeing for the first time, and some you probably won't see again, including on the bottom of the graphic, Mariel Bailey. That is someone who dropped out this morning. She's not even gonna be here for the debate. But tonight has 10 now candidates run, uh, in, in this debate. Uh, the more candidates, the better for current Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, who is trying to keep her job by switching to this district from her Western Slope district. Other notable names here, state reps Mike Lynch and Richard Holtorf. Lynch just resigned as House Minority Leader, and Holtorf, as you mentioned, a staunch opponent of abortion, backtracked on a speech he gave last week where he praised the impact of an abortion he helped pay for. Logan County Commissioner Jerry Sonnenberg is popular in the rural parts of CD4. Not everyone on this graphic will be on the June 28th primary ballot. They will need to collect signatures or go to the Congressional District 4 Assembly and get enough support by party insiders to qualify. It's quite possible, Kyle, that the winner of the primary will have support in the teens or the 20s, which means one in five or one in four Republican and unaffiliated voters who participate in the primary will be deciding who will represent CD4 at least for the next two years. This is going to be fascinating to watch tonight, and I don't know whether whether Bobert, who's the presumed front runner, is going to attack these other candidates for their personal baggage, knowing that she has more than the cargo hold of a 737, or whether she's just going to say, hey, listen, don't pick on those guys. The more, the merrier, because that big crowded field helps her with all the name identification and all the money. Strategy will be interesting tonight, whether they're just going to answer direct questions and keep it about them, or if it starts going sideways in terms of like talking about someone who's next to you, we will have some of the highlights at 9 and 10. All right. Very good. Marshall, best seat in the house tonight. Thank you, sir. Donald Trump suddenly holds real sway over whether Denver is going to get help to address the migrant crisis here. NBC News and other media outlets report that Republicans in Congress are considering abandoning a border security deal, which could include funding for Denver, because Trump prefers the issue to be unresolved so that he can use it against President Biden. Republicans have largely worked out a deal with Democrats in Congress on border security and immigration. President Biden is supportive of those talks. NBC and others report that at a private Republican meeting, leaders said that Trump's opposition to this plan is a real issue. A few Republican senators have come out and said that it would be immoral and appalling to let the border crisis go unresolved just because it would be a good campaign issue for Trump. And Colorado's Democratic Governor Jared Polis echoed that on TV today. It's so close, Neil, Congress to finally get border security done. I really think uh, that, that President, former President Trump is on the wrong side of this. If he's basically saying, don't secure the border, uh, we're not going to solve this. The American people want this solved. We need to substantially reduce illegal immigration, and we need to reform the system to make it work better where we can. To your credit, Trump has told Republicans that they should kill this border security deal unless they get everything they want. And today, Trump asked Republican governors to send their National Guard troops down to Texas to begin removing migrants from the country. School nurses in Denver say that they deserve extra pay because they covered extra schools during a nursing shortage. An independent arbiter agreed with the nurses. District's not having it. Districts, uh, nurses with the Denver Classroom Teachers Association, that's a union that represents teachers and other staff, say that a district-wide staffing shortage meant that nurses were required to cover extra schools last year. They essentially said that they were substitutes. They were subs for the schools lacking nurses and that the union contract says that means extra pay. The district argued that only teachers get that pay. Late last month, the arbiter sided with the union, said that the nurses assigned to additional schools should be paid an extra $200 per week. They put that up for a vote at tonight's school board meeting, and the school board unanimously rejected the arbiter's decision. A district spokesperson said that paying all that back pay would have lasting financial impacts on the district. They decided to give those nurses a $1,000 bonus instead. Just the simplest things. I want to wash a dish off. Nope. 
I, I can't do that without using my bottled water. Town in the foothills is getting creative. People there are on day seven without clean water. City Council in Aurora bans babies from being up there after a member brings her toddler to swearing in. And some of history's most esteemed artworks get a fresh look through the eyes of a child. Next. Indian Hills up in the Jeffco foothills has been a week without clean drinking water as the hunt for the leak in their system continues. The search for the problems going so poorly that the state's Rural Water Association is stepping in to help look. In the meantime, Indian Hills has set up a big tank with clean drinking water at their water district building. People can go and get free water so long as they bring their own containers. Still, some folks are turning to more desperate measures for the rest of their water needs. We've been getting water from the gutters. Um, to do the toilets, but Debbie said she doesn't have gutters. <laughs> right. I just have big pails I'm filling up with snow and letting it melt, and then you have to take all the debris out of it before you can put it in your toilet. Rustic. Some homes in Indian Hills have been hooked up to a temporary running water source, but that's high in nitrates. It means that it's not safe for babies. Adults need to boil that water before they drink it to kill off bacteria. Get this though, boiling that water any longer than a minute or two condenses the nitrates and then it's unsafe to drink again. National climate scientists say the impact of climate change could be even worse than originally predicted in certain regions, like Colorado, where scientists predict a future with more intense wildfires. New report from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR, says that our dry climate isn't doing us any favors. In most places, warmer atmospheres hold more water vapor, but NCAR says recent info shows Colorado and the rest of the Southwest seem to be bucking that trend. They're about 7% drier than what earlier models projected. That means that those older models might have underestimated the risk for fires. The lack of moisture is also bad news for future temperatures. NCAR says that water vapor in the atmosphere helps to regulate our daily temperature swings. That places like Colorado could be in for more intense heat waves in the future as well. Another beautiful day in Colorado, sunshine and 50 degrees, but tonight it's all going to change with the arrival of a cold front that will bring some snow to Denver. Snow's already beginning across the Continental Divide and Western Slope as the system kind of rotates over the Four Corners area. It will pick up some moisture and pull in some cold air. So the highs we enjoyed today, we're going to not see those numbers for a few days. Advisories for dense fog across the Central Plains, winter weather advisories in the Central and Southern Mountains. The snow doesn't really get going here in Denver until after midnight and really will taper off pretty early tomorrow. The only advisories for travel across the Southwest Mountains and on I-25 south of Colorado Springs down to Pueblo. Might see about an inch of snow in Denver after 2 a.m. through about lunchtime tomorrow. Not a big storm for us. There will be some pockets of slightly higher accumulation above 6,500 feet to the west and to the south. There shouldn't be any issues uh, going in and out of DIA tomorrow. So your temperatures trending comfortable this afternoon and evening with increasing clouds and wind. Snow showers early tomorrow, a cooler Friday with a high of 43 and then clearing. Upper 40 Saturday, 50 Sunday and Monday, and yep, 60 degrees for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. I think that some of them were kind of weird. Yeah, I don't disagree with these kids' hot takes about some of Denver's most famous pieces of art. Aurora City Council now has baby drama, a baby ban, in fact. Next. Aurora City Council just updated their anti-discrimination and workplace harassment policies, while they also directly targeted a colleague who brought her kid to work last month. When Aurora City Councilor Allison Coombs was sworn in last month, she brought her toddler with her onto the dais, and she held her toddler while she took the oath of office. How sweet is that, right? Other council members said it was disruptive and disrespectful. Coombs later says she was told that she needed to attend virtually if she could not find child care. As first reported by the Aurora Sentinel, city councilors then took it a step further this week. They passed a new rule keeping everyone but select city leaders off of the dais. It doesn't affect me because I've already agreed um, to not do this, who it probably would affect is a mom that's nursing a tiny little baby that now is no longer permitted to be on the dais. I tried to handle it that night between you and I, um, and that didn't happen. 
So I lost all trust um, when tissues were flying, tissue boxes were flying. It, it minimized the dignity and the honor and the professionalism of this body. Council was almost unanimous in approving the rule changes. In fact, Coons was the only no vote. The Denver Art Museum is giving visitors a different perspective on their exhibits from people who look up to the art. Welcome. We're so glad you decided to stop by our painting. The point is to literally let the audience know how you feel about the paintings and where to go next. You are listening to an audio guide made by a group of young people ages 7 to 11. So you just press 205 and then you take it to your ear. I noticed that there's like a party happening of some sort. I see like boats on black water. Nothing to do, just sit in my chair and watch the clock tick tock. You don't have to be an expert to do it. I'm not really good at art, but I still like how I did the audio. I don't really think of myself as an expert, but I had a lot of fun with this. Our story begins in a forest. I hear birds chopping. I like how you can see where the brush marks are. The main thing in this painting is just an, an old man. I don't have a grandpa, so I, I kind of like it because I kind of want a grandpa. I mean, in the narration, we made them out to be dogs, and I forget their names. <laughs> and these are our dogs, Lucy, Credence, and Sparky. Usually, the water wouldn't be black, but sometimes it can be black because the pollution from boats and stuff. A lot of the paintings are very free for interpretation. This picture reminds me of french fries, but someone put food coloring in them and now they're rainbow french fries. They could represent emotion, so maybe the french fries are having emotion. It's not rainbow french fries. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then we saw a sunset. And that's the end of the story. As somebody who has trouble getting art, I feel like these kids are ahead of me. Marissa has your feedback, which means I have your feedback, which means you will get the feedback next. The most Colorado thing we saw today is a geo tracker, all souped up with nowhere to go. A viewer named Emily sent us this photo of a vehicle that looks like it would like to at least attempt going off road. Somebody's put a lot of money into it, but that sucker ain't going anywhere because the trailer is double booted in downtown Denver. Free the geo tracker. If you see something that says Colorado to you like this does to us, send it to next at 9news.com. Jay Trowbridge writes in tonight, hey Kyle, could you add in some transition sentences or words between stories, please? Hashtag abrupt. Keith writes, well, those traffic cameras won't do any good now that we've told everybody where they're at. I don't know, Keith, everybody knows, everybody knows where the red light cameras are and people still get popped by those. We have signs up about the speed cameras. People still get popped by those. So we'll wait and see. Josh writes, Kyle, it's January of an election year and you are a partisan hack every night. P.S. Buffalo blows. Dude, don't kick me in my bills. <laughs>